Wow, Bricky, it's so impressive to see you at formerly known as Howie's Game Shack. Uh, how have you been? Are you still a gamer? <laughs> oh, Bricky, you poor soul. Of course I'm not a gamer. Ever since I got these fantastic Warby Parker glasses. <laughs> I lost my gamer card years ago because I had sex. Wow, Bricky, Warby Parker? Sex? I've never heard of those. Tell me more. Oh, you simpleton. Warby Parker is committed to creating fantastic eyewear, sunglasses, prescription glasses, whatever you need at an affordable cost. Glasses start at only $95 and have many different varieties, such as sunglasses, prescription, or something a little more fancy. I too can speak for Bricky. Another Warby Parker sex haver? Why yes, I did their try it at home kit and I took their special quiz to specifically have personalized sunglasses just for me. Five of them, in fact, were sent to my home that I was able to try. When are you gonna tell me about that sex thing? Use and figure out exactly which ones were the best fit for me. Indeed, the try at home kit is a must have for any Warby Parker customer. It allows you to know exactly the kind of glasses you're getting, personalized for your face and knowing full well if you can do this. The Try It At Home Kit was a fantastic idea. It allows you to try five pairs of glasses at home for free if you visit warbyparker.com slash bricky. The glasses quality is quite nice. They have excellent builds. The lenses are very fine. They fit on the head perfectly. And they have lots of extra questions to make sure they are suited for you. And they're extremely easy to send back. Oh my God, I understand now. And now I've had sex. Check out the link in the description. Try your try to home kit of Warby Parker. Five glasses, all in to figure out which ones are best for you. WarbyParker.com slash Bricky. And thank you very much for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently serving 10 to life for alerting the horde every time I see a car alarm. We all have that friend. Fuck you, Andy. And there are two kinds of people in this world. People who shit themselves when they hear this specific noise and bullshit fucking liars. Considering myself a decent man of culture, I've played through a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 in my time. But as of a few weeks ago, I got back into it with some of my friends, specifically that 4v4 versus mode, which I would argue is the epitome of playing Left 4 Dead 2. So out of curiosity, I went to the player count on the Steam charts to see how is Left 4 Dead 2 doing in 2021. And to my surprise, I found it had roughly a 16 thousand 24 hour peak player count. God damn that's big. But it got me thinking because obviously Valve games have a dedicated fan base, right? Team Fortress 2 is a testament to that. But where Team Fortress 2 has the hat economy and it's a class based shooter, which is pretty in right now, Left 4 Dead's a horde shooter. And co-op horde shooters are relatively rare right now. And it got me thinking about why this game is so timeless. Because those 4v4 nights with my friends have been some of the best gaming experiences I've had in years. Slayer. What? Out of my way. What? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so strap on your med kit, grab some incendiary ammo, and let's discuss all the facets that keep Left 4 Dead alive and kicking even 12 years later. I'd say Left 4 Dead's best attribute is the disparity between the casual and the hardcore player. Each campaign is broken up into four to five different chapters, and each of these chapters involves starting off in a safe room with lots of gear, weapons, and ammo, and then making your way to a similar safe room, which also operates as the beginning safe room of the next chapter. The final chapter tends to be some kind of wave defense or holdout mission where you use lots of different kinds of ammo and consumables to stop a ongoing horde of zombies before you can escape and end the campaign. At its bare bones, and I mean bare bones, Left 4 Dead is about managing your resources in each chapter. You'll be fighting off hordes and hordes of regular zombies as well as special infected making your way to the next chapter safe room. During that period of time, however, your health does not naturally regenerate, special infected generally can't be stopped without your team's help, you can't be revived without your team's help, and the entire game revolves around a close-knit cycle of managing health, ammo, and and keeping up your teamwork. But as a new player, this is super easy to understand. Ah, oh, fuck, Hunter on me, Hunter on me, get it off. Yo, bro, I'm fucking dying here, give me some help. I see a red door, 
fuck all y'all, I'm going for it. Whereas experienced players take this to a different level. All right, everyone cross this bridge at the same time. There's no going back. Tank spawns up here, save the Molotov. I heard the charger spawn sound, stay away from the windows. This guy took the chrome shotgun instead of the silence SMG. I'm gonna call him a slur in chat. Through all of this, your success depends on you as a team and your knowledge of the game. But these aren't the reasons why Left 4 Dead has such a dedicated fan base because I can play No Mercy over and over and over again if I feel like it. And that's not because of the disparity between old and new players, but rather the fantastic map design, the great enemy variety, and the director. The maps remain iconic because they are like a playground at a theme park. A theme park has only one dedicated entrance. When you're in, you can do whatever the hell you want. No play style is unacceptable. You can go shotgun, you can go sniper, assault rifle, you can run around there with a gigantic frying pan. You can go to the right to try to get as much stuff as you want, or you can just bum rush to the safe house because you know how to get there. There isn't one play style that technically beats out every single other one. So you have the full reign to do it however you want. But again, like there is only one entrance, there is only one exit. This restricts the player just enough to where at the end of the day, they are still going to the same spot. The way they move through the map is still technically the same. However, it makes it feel like you are completely in charge of how you tackle the situation and where you feel like going. Adding to this experience is the special infected. Left 4 Dead chapters are covered in swarms and swarms of regular zombies, which are generally not a threat unless they are in hordes or show up at an inconvenient time. Special infected are a fancy kind of zombie that create a much bigger threat to the player. A hunter, for instance, will pin down a survivor and do constant damage until they are rescued by another survivor because you can't save yourself. Boomers disrupt a survivor's vision and make it so large hordes of zombies start attacking them. Chargers are really good displacing survivors and moving them away from the group. And then there's the tank who looks like the average member of Slash Fit and the witch. These infected greatly change how you play the map each time. One game, you'll have a charger fling your buddy off the roof and you have to deal with the fact that you are now one man down. A jockey will pull your buddy into the fire or perhaps a hunter will pounce you while a spitter cuts off your route. You can't have the same experiences every time when the game puts you in situations where you alone can't win. This also changes when you play the special infected in the versus mode. You know, spitters will find corridors and tight alleys to slow down survivors. Chargers will find different kinds of roofs. The smokers will do their best to keep ground people from far away, but keep themselves out of sight. But if there aren't players controlling the special infected, instead it is controlled by the game's AI, the director. The director in a very basic term is an AI that controls the flow of the game and gives more benefits or removes them depending on how well the survivor group is doing. The game does not have set spawn points. In fact, the director changes that on the fly entirely depending on how your group is proceeding. It creates a situation in which you have a different dynamic experience every time you make your way through. If you're doing extremely well, the director might not spawn extra resources for you later on. They might actually have a tank spawn up where there normally wasn't one, or perhaps throw a witch in in there, or if they're feeling extremely mean, throw a horde of zombies next to said witch. On the other hand, if your group is really struggling, they might remove a tank spawn that was supposed to be there. There might no longer be a car alarm that can summon the horde, or they'll spawn more pills, adrenaline shots, molotovs for you as time goes on. The AI director helps make each different chapter, neither a stomp nor a slog. It allows you to play the same maps over and over again, and yet constantly have a different experience because the flow of the game is always being tweaked, adjusted, and more importantly, is not in your hands. And this alone would be enough, but we need to talk about design. Ah! I didn't know the buses ran this late. They don't. Well, they're dropping someone Pattern recognition is a curse. It's a sort of internet Stockholm syndrome, you know? I can't look at a little circle in the middle of a cylindrical object ever again. I can't look at a four panel comic ever again. I can't play Hollow Knight anymore, or Dark Souls, or Minecraft. I think diehard Left 4 Dead fans are the most 
cursed. Because you don't even need to play a second of Left 4 Dead to know where this sound comes from. But the more you play, the easier it becomes to recognize the low grumble of a boomer, the cough of the smoker. At this point, all Left 4 Dead players need is three musical notes to immediately know exactly what's coming their way. Yo, guys be scared to moan, but I'm alone in my bedroom like... <laughs> This is in part due to the brilliance of the sound and visual design of Left 4 Dead. Visually, the graphics hold up actually pretty well for over a decade old game. I mean, that could just be just Source Engine being a very useful engine, but a combination of that, and I think how they make the game look, how the silhouettes look, how the environment looks, it has a very specific style to it. It's very clean. It allows you to always know what's a zombie and what's a piece of terrain. This art direction is held over to the special infected as well. Seeing the special infected in a crowd is a very important part of Left 4 Dead, and they do it brilliantly. With the exception of the hunter, who's just a dude with a hoodie, but that's kind of his point, he's supposed to kind of be able to go in the crowd. But for everyone else, the smoker has the giant flailing tongue and he's super freaking tall. The spitter drools the bright green acid. The charger has gone from hand job to hand career. Visuals alone are great, but it's nothing compared to the sound. Each special infected has a very distinct voice, where if the little notes prior did not give the player enough warning, their sound effects most certainly will. Honestly, the thing that made me want to start this whole video was the iconic hunter scream. It's fascinating, because the low growl of the hunter were very familiar with. Right, that slight point before he's ready to start pouncing on you. Since it only goes off during the pounce attack, he will always be flying through the air every time he does this jump. Now normally in the game, the voice line would be stagnant and then the volume would change depending on where he is. But then I noticed when I listen to the pounce, it has a built-in Doppler effect. Instead of making a flat scream and adjusting the volume depending on where they are to the player, this scream is baked in as a rise and fall scream, like going from far away to close to far again. Like the gold Doppler effect. It's baked into the freaking scream. This does two things. It makes it extremely clear that the hunter is there and a present threat. And two, it doesn't obfuscate the hunter from any kind of area based on the different terrain. If he's behind a building or, or underneath an area, it doesn't matter because besides the low growl, that sound, that screech, will be present no matter what. And this is true of basically any special infected. I mean, the ambient noise that they make is super helpful. You can hear that boomer gurgle to stop an ambush that he's always weighing in the bathroom, because he's always weighing in the bathroom. The screech of a charger will send any intelligent team scattering. Yo, dudes be too much of a bitch to go down on their girlfriend, yet there I am head between thighs like... <laughs> And backing this all up, of course, are the characters of Left 4 Dead, and they're freaking awesome. Da -na -na -na, na -na -na -na. Now you as a group don't need to spend all of your time calling out different kinds of enemies or medkits and stuff when all the characters do it for you. They'll scream Hunter, Spitter, Jockey, they'll scream Medkit, Pills, Adrenaline. It's also fantastic if you're playing solo or maybe with only one other buddy because then the AI will do the exact same callouts, which is super handy because it's almost like you got your own little friendly teammate there. And hey, speaking of teammates and randoms and AI, Let's talk about that modern day Left 4 Dead. <laughs> As of now, Left 4 Dead is absolutely bumping. Every single map from the original has been added to Left 4 Dead 2, as well as some DLC and extra maps. The game recently had an officially sanctioned community patch with a shitload more survival scavenge maps, as well as a two chapter campaign, which is a little short, but it's still cool to have it. But the modding scene is completely off the rails. It's a source engine game, so moddable is basically its middle name. And yeah, you can do some small things, like some textures or some other like random mods like that, but it comes to the point when I can be fighting Shrek Tank with an entire squad full of Drip Goku, when I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is good shit. Though after a few games with randoms, there are basically 
three players who play Left 4 Dead. One of them is the 4v4 versus people, which we'll talk about soon. There's the other player where if you are completely new to the game, they will do everything in their power to hopefully have you stick around because they love when new players join their game. And then there's the try-hard players who will easily fuck your house and burn your mother if you get downed one more time. Getting matched with the latter is torture, but getting matched with the former is a fantastic experience, and I really appreciate all of you out there who do that. It's great to see genuinely nice people care so much for the Left 4 Dead community, especially for a horde shooter made 12 years ago. You normally don't see that kind of stuff in anything outside of like an MMO, maybe. However, as fun as that is, 4v4 versus is the epitome of Left 4 Dead. Now you need eight players. I guess you could do six if you both want one AI. But the way Versus is, is that it's two teams taking turns doing Survivor and Infected throughout an entire campaign. The campaign difficulty is set to normal, which I think is pretty good because the regular zombies are still like kind of a threat, but not really too much, because all of the special infected are now played by your bros. So if you start with a regular four chapter campaign, it's a pretty standard fare, you know, four survivors make their way to the next safe zone. However, since all the special infected are played by your bros, now you have this really intense coordination that you and all your friends have to try to take down the survivors. Once the survivors get to the door or are all killed off, then they get a certain amount of points and then the roles are reversed. And then the other players who were once the infected try to do the exact same, but try to get a higher score. Then when you've both done that chapter, move on to the next chapter, repeat, repeat, repeat until the campaign is over and whoever had the most points wins. There are two things that make this an amazing mode. Number one, the ability to bully your friends. Often the AI won't be enough to create a bunch of fancy combos, but you and your buddies most certainly can. Often you'll have those maps with areas where you can't return to and good coordinated infected can pull someone or try to stop someone from going over so they are just auto dead. But you'll have also these other fun things because the survivors are visualized to all the infected at all times. So you could easily grab someone who veers a little too far away from the group. And the second reason is the fantastic never ending ability to trash talk your friends. Normally, whenever we do this, you just create two different Discord calls and then, you know, you, you play the game and everything, but there is nothing more enjoyable than finishing off a chapter, all of you joining once again, and just screaming at each other. Why did CSGO ever remove the, the halftime, like, chat? Why'd they do that? It was so funny! Just once that round is over, the infected of the survivors win, and then you both jump together, and then these just giant return to monkey screams of bravado as just obscenities are thrown left and right. It brings me back to the old days. Hell, it's the reason why custom games in Halo became so damn popular, and hell, I feel like you get a lot more of it if more games were open to the idea of allowing you to create these private matches and still earn experience and rewards and stuff. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on how CBT can save gaming, I'll put a thing in the eye up there, you would be wondering why I would like Left 4 Dead so much because it doesn't have any of the facets of CBT. But instead of being a detriment, it instead should just prove how good of a gameplay loop this game has and why it's still bumping even in the modern day. And to prove my point, here are some clips. Oh, no, oh, I got No, finished. oh no, the witch! No, she's coming! Witch. She's coming! Witch. <laughs> witch! Oh, thank God! Tank's coming. Tank's okay, up top. Right. The, I it Make sure it doesn't right. knock you off. I like that! <laughs> oh no! Okay. Goodbye. There's no way a boomer's not. <laughs> <laughs> Every oh, smoker, time! Smoker, smoker. Here comes the witch! She's running! She's running! Oh, they set off the car. As She's well. running! <laughs> oh. Oh. Gold Why? flare! <laughs> Valve is just as bad at updating their games as they are at counting, which should instead show just how freaking good Left 4 Dead 2 is. A combination of a clear visual and sound system, a fantastic AR director, great gameplay loop, good characters, and fantastic maps makes this game still in the five-figure player count 12 years later, and it makes me nothing but happy. If you haven't played it with your friends lately, please jump back into it. Get that versus mode going. I am also completely condoning cyberbullying to anyone who makes Spitter Rule 34. You people disgust me. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to my fantastic patrons at patreon.com slash bricky. And let's answer some of your questions. What is a food that you've eaten where you've immediately had instant regret? Deep fried Klondike bar at the Orange County Fair. I almost threw up. Favorite swear word and why? I really like fuckery. 
because it kind of sounds like a more worse version of shenanigans. Like, what's all this fuckery afoot? I don't know. It just it rolls out. Of, uh, just got got a good got a good feel to it. Yo, bricky orchid anal beads when? Now that's a Kickstarter. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in ten days.